purple outfits with the gold, very intimidating. The best weapons of the day. And Hezekiah, he didn't know what to do except one thing. And that was like Jonah. He prayed. The Bible says that the death angel come in the night and 185,000 it says 104 score and 5,000 it's 185,000 of Sennacherib's men were slain by the angel God sent to protect Hezekiah and his people. Sennacherib goes back and he goes to worship his pagan god, the god of fertility. And his two sons go into the temple and they kill their father. For centuries, for thousands of years, biblical scholars, historians said Jonah was a mythical legend. The story about Sennacherib and 185,000 is what a story a person wants to tell a story. Now that's a story to tell. But in 1845 to 1854 British archaeologist named Leonard set out to try and find where Nineveh was. It was on the east side of the Tigris River. Remember the Tigris and the Euphrates River? Where the Mesopotamia is, what we call today Iraq. And he started digging. That city had two walls. Had 15 gates. And the Babylonians teamed up with the ones from Iran. And they went up there and they literally destroyed Nineveh. Matter of fact, there's been so many conquests that have traveled over the city of Nineveh that. No soldiers really knew that they were going over once. The city that could be compared to nothing else. But archaeologists have found it. And they found the skeletons. And they found the weapons that were in their hands. A professor from the University of California said it was the greatest find in archaeology that it had ever been found. Because you see, in Nineveh, the king was also known to keep a great library where he had written on tablets. And you know something? The stories that I just told you were written on his God's word is true. And people who think that when a preacher stands behind a pulpit and says that the day is coming when Jesus is coming again, that he died on a cross, he was buried, he conquered death, he ascended into heaven, and one day he's coming back again. Oh yes, history records that it's true. God's word is true and that you can believe the words that are written. That God works in mysterious ways to confound the very wise. Skeletons in a closet. Today, I want you to think back the first time you ever had an x-ray. 
I was absolutely taken back that I was so ugly under the skin. And I, I, I seen all these bones, and I, oh man, that's me. And there's one, yeah, that's you. I said, well, what's this right here? She said, that's gas. I said, they can even see that. She went, yeah. The Bible says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The skeleton in the closet will tell you how you live for Christ. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. God knows the very intents of the heart. And when you shear this closet door open, God looks at your heart. What does he see? Does he see a person that believes in prayer? I believe that God can touch Derek's life and make it whole. Why? Because the Bible says he can. I believe that he can raise people up who are depressed and discouraged and do not know what they're going to do next. And that the Holy Spirit will interject into you a joy. Well, Paul wrote, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice and he writes that from a prison. The Bible talks about God's servants being in prison and singing songs in heavens and saying, wow, one day at a time. One day at a time. When the doctors overdosed me with Demerol, my body craved it. I can't, I can't explain to you how it craved it. And I walked through the doors of a treatment center to get help. I was angry at God. I had sat on the radio for years, many programs. My God, why do I have to go through these doors? Where are you? 28 days later. Oh, I thought, I, I, can't, I can't live like this. Because everybody who ever went to treatment, they, they kind of put it in a closet. Like, oh, you know, I had a problem. But God showed me and met me. Let me meet a person on a radio station. That had another problem, but he went to treatment. And we formed what they called the Board of Directors of the Sunrise Care Facility in Spring Grove, Minnesota. That will help chronic alcoholic and drug dependent people. Do I need to tell you why God had me go through those doors? to help someone else. As you examine your heart and your life today, I, I trust that you just don't see a skeleton, but that you see a life that can be lived for Christ. Oh, God is so good. He'll open doors no man can open, and he'll shut no, he'll open doors no man can close, and he'll shut doors no man can open. But in the meantime, you will live your faith for him and enjoy the ride you have through life. May the grace of God, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you. In Jesus' name, amen.